So in the first part of this tutorial, we got to this stage where all the pixels on the display are turned on, and that was by virtue of this command at the bottom there, LCD write command, hexadecimal 09, turn all the segments on. Well now I'm going to change that so that we don't turn all the segments on, we just have normal video mode, um, which I'll show you uh, in this table. And uh, so it is, where is it? Yes, it's down the bottom here. Normal mode, D and E need to be one and zero. So looking up in the table, uh, it will be one, one, zero, zero, which is O for those four bits, C. So I need to change that back to OC. So the bottom line there, LCD write command, hexadecimal OC, and I've changed the comment to LCD normal video. Let's try uh, sending that to the unit. There goes the data on the red LEDs. And the display goes to normal video. Now, one or two of the pixels are randomly on, and that's because the uh, data memory hasn't been initialized. We haven't sent any data to it, so it's just got random nonsense in there at the moment. So the thing to do now is to start sending data to the display. So what I'm going to do is copy this entire block here and paste it in at this point. And uh, now I've got two identical uh, functions, but I'm going to change the name of the uh, top one to LCD write data and uh, change the low here to a high because to write data to the display, the DC bit, the data command bit, needs to be high. I'll just do that now. So there's my LCD write data function. Now it's virtually identical to the write command function. Um, I've changed the name of this variable to dat uh, just uh, to make it make sense. And as I say, we're now setting the DC pin high for data. Now, you might say that this is not very dry. Dry, D-R-Y, meaning don't repeat yourself. But I found when I combine these into one function, it just wasn't as readable. I wanted to have two separate, separate functions, one called LCD write command and the other called LCD write data. So I'm sacrificing a little bit of dryness here for a little bit of readability. So I've added a couple of commands here using the new function LCD write data and I'm sending a hexadecimal 55 and a hexadecimal AA and they may be familiar uh, numbers you can see oh can you see well just up there in the top left the 55 are the four dots sort of biased upwards and the AA are the four dots biased downwards and so you can see from that that the two bytes that I've sent are actually vertical columns of eight pixels with the least significant bit at the top. Now, just for a bit of fun, I've moved those two commands out of the setup uh, function, which is up here, and down into the loop function. So it'll send 55 and AA repeatedly to the display because anything in the loop function gets um, repeated over and over and over again. So let's just send that out compiling and that'll get sent soon so we'll see the red LEDs flashing and what do we get on the display well we get an entire uh, crosshatch pattern because the 55s and the AAs are being sent to the display over and over again and in fact that crosshatch pattern is being rewritten time and time and time again we can't see that because uh, the positions aren't moving but what it tells us is that um, any bytes of data that we send to this display cause an auto increment of the uh, display address. We don't need to say move to the next display location. The display does that for us. It has auto incrementing. And because of uh, one of the modes we set up, it auto increments in a horizontal direction. Let's have a look at the table again. Now, if you remember, we set the V bit to a zero. And you can see there in the table that uh, sets it to horizontal addressing. Now we could have set it to a one, 
and that's vertical addressing and that means that the uh, bytes of data would be placed initially in the top left position and then running down the screen um, we've used horizontal addressing so they're running across the screen now I've just changed the uh, data byte that I'm sending repeatedly in the loop to hexadecimal FE um, because I wanted to show that this display actually only has six rows. Um, in terms of pixels it has 48 rows but in terms of addressable locations there are only six. There are 84 addressable locations in a horizontal direction because bytes are vertical columns of eight pixels but only six addressable locations in the vertical direction. So in terms of data bytes it's 84 by 6. Now here's just a little bit of mathematical fun. I initially thought that by writing three instructions to the display I could cause movement but I didn't, didn't realize that um, 504 which is 6 by, four, uh, 6 by 84 is actually divisible by 3 but it isn't divisible by 5 so by sending 5 instructions of just sort of random not quite random but um, differing data we get a little bit of movement on the display now that wouldn't happen if we sent either 1, 2, 3 or 4 instructions because all of those numbers divide uh, neatly into 504 5 doesn't of course because that would divide into 505 hence uh, every time round the loop we're getting a bit of movement now that's all jolly good fun of course but it doesn't uh, achieve the aim that uh, this part two of the video meant to achieve and that is to write characters to the display so in comes a new function I've called it LCD write character we need to pass in a character and you can see there that there's a for loop which executes five times and five times it calls LCD write data and it takes data from um, a, uh, an array, a two-dimensional array called ASCII and that is the font and then uh, the second line LCD write data naught puts a space so what we're doing is writing a five pixel wide character and then putting a space after it but we need a font. Now this display doesn't have a built-in font so I've had to bring one in. I've done it as a separate file and the way that works is that you just put the file alongside the Eno file in the uh, folder and this is just a very large array of all the data required to um, get all of the characters of the ASCII character set here are the lowercase ones, further up we have the uppercase characters and it starts at hexadecimal 20 because the 32 characters prior to that are all control codes, they're non-printing characters um, so if you look back at the function here it subtracts 20 in order to uh, uh, cope with that offset anyway this will enable us now to send characters uh, to the display and uh, there on the display in the top left in amongst all the rubbish from the previous uh, data I sent is a capital A and that was sent by in the uh, setup routine sending ASCII code 41 now if you know ASCII and hexadecimal you may know that a capital A is ASCII code 41 if I switch to the font uh, and go to the uppercase characters which start here there's a capital A ASCII code 41 and these are the five bytes of data that get sent out 7E, 311s for the middle bit and then another 7E and that produces our capital A now you could of course put the uh, font array as a two-dimensional array in your main file I've chosen to put it separately so that it doesn't clutter up my main file but it does mean I've had to put that statement in there include font.h and then as you can see from the second tab font.h is a separate file now it wouldn't be very convenient to uh, keep sending our uh, ASCII characters as hexadecimal values what we want to do is send a string so if you notice there I've got a new function called lcd write string 
and uh, you can send a whole string of characters into this. It breaks them up into individual characters and it itself calls the LCD write character function, which is directly below it. Now, these star variables, um, I have to admit, I haven't got a clue what they are because I'm relatively new to uh, the C programming language. I think they might be pointers, but I could be wrong. And if I am wrong, by all means, let me know in the uh, comments for this video. But um, I just copied this from somewhere else. It works. I'm happy with that. So now what I can do is send a string of characters uh, to the LCD write string function. It will then call the LCD write character function. That in turn calls the LCD write data function. And we should finally be able to put characters on the display. So here's the call. It is LCD write string hello. And on the display, hello has appeared. Um, now there's junk all over the display, so I really want to clear that. Um, so I'm going to write um, a clear screen uh, routine as well. So remember that number 504, which is 84 multiplied by 6. Um, here is a, a for loop, which uh, takes the variable i from 0 to 503, but it's 504 um, iterations, I suppose you could call them. And it writes uh, LCD write data a zero and that clears the LCD and then I do an LCD write string the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog and on the display finally we have a string of characters now the um, the, the display is no great respecter of um, word endings so it split the words up and in fact it would also have broken the individual characters up if it weren't for the fact that these characters are six pixels wide. Five pixels for the letter and then the one pixel space. And six just happens to divide into 84. Now the final thing you might want to do is just play around with the contrast value. It's the second line down in those commands. It was B8. I've increased it to BF. Uh, remember these are hexadecimal numbers. And the result of that is that the text has uh, darkened up slightly and I'm not sure you can see this you might just be able to see that the pixels that are off are actually now slightly on so the contrast has altered it may not be the ideal setting but it's well worth just uh, fiddling around with that value uh, adjusting it until you get the best possible display result now I've just written one final function this is called lcdxy two parameters are passed in, the x address and the y address, and it itself calls the LCD write command function twice, so I've put it directly above the LCD write command function, and the x and y variables are ORed with these numbers 80 and 40, and I'll try and explain what that's doing. Now in the command table we have these two commands, set y address of RAM, set x address of RAM, in the set y address, uh, let's just check, yes, db7 there, it needs to set this d6 bit, and you can do that using an or, or with 40 hex, and for the set x address, we need to set bit 7 to a 1, and that can be achieved, again, logically using an or function, or with 80 hex. And so here's the big finale. I've set the x, y addresses to 20 and 2. That means I'm at uh, location 20 in the x direction, that's the horizontal direction, and uh, line 2 in the vertical direction, and I've written the string the end, and this is what we get. 